How'd you acquire this? Goodwill. Goodwill? I like it. Just you liked it. We're getting emotional. Christina's getting emotional. She's kind of like, oh, I liked it. I just it kept talking to me. Yeah. Right? So you had to have it. But it didn't fit anything. It didn't. didn't oh, it didn't fit anything that I said on YouTube. The frame. So you bought it even though I told you it was probably a piece of junk. So you learn all this stuff and then you just, she's laughing now, but. Yeah. So you learn all this stuff and then you just ignore me. I bought it because of the. I give you a lot of credit because even though you ignored me, you still came to make me see whether or not I think it's okay. That's good. I think that's good. That's trying to learn. All right. Let's. It's the canvas, that's what got it's the canvas that got you? Yeah, it's not like regular canvas. It's like suede. It's not like regular canvas. It's like suede, yeah. which isn't like canvas at all. But okay, well, let's talk about the back. Let's start with the back. I always start with the back. Look at the back. Do you like the back? No. What have I taught you? It's supposed to have nail. Supposed to have nails or brads, as opposed to these. These are framers' points that date to about the 1960s. So Christina thinks that they put the print, or whatever that work of art is, into a different frame. Yes. OK. What about the cardboard? It's not good. Cardboard is what? Not good. Not good. Yeah, right. Cardboard's bad, really bad. OK. So you caught that. So you're watching enough of my videos to catch on to the good stuff. All right. So that has to be removed, right? If it's glued down, what should you do? Do nothing. Divorces are hard. Have any of you been divorced? <laughs> do nothing. If it is glued down, do not try to divorce it. Leave it alone, right? Because you will probably damage the artwork while you're doing that. Okay, let's look at the front. So you bought it. Did you get a bargain? Let's ask that first. $8.49. Did you have that $8.49? Okay, then it's not a bargain. Okay. <laughs> so we've got that. Tell me about the frame. I think the frame is just very... How old is the frame? Is it from before 1950 or after 1950? It's from before 1950. That frame dates any time between 1910 and 1935. I'm not kidding you. I don't kid at all. I have a dog in the hunt. I do not care. <laughs> I tell you the truth. That's the truth. All right. So that's where you are here. I do lie about my weight usually, <laughs> you know, and a little bit about my age because I think I look 27. <laughs> That's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right. So this says C. Russell. And then there is a little image, and then there's a date. It says C. Russell. Do you know who this is? Charles Russell. This is Charles Marion Russell, very well-known Western artist, along with Frederick Remington, right, <laughs> and others. So what you have here, in fact, and you're looking at this, you're saying, well, that canvas looks like something. It looks like suede, even. Yeah. You took a loop to it, yeah. I see the, the raised paint. And you see the raised pigment, the highlighting of the white. You see the fiber along with the black areas. Yes. OK. That's what I for. OK, that's what you looked that's for. What got me confused. That's what got you confused. OK. And this is from my YouTube channel. I go, look at this and look for that and get your loop and do this and do that. Your loop has a light, too. So look, Christina's loop is better than my lousy loop. <laughs> I got to get your loop. OK. So and then you looked at this. And did you look at the signature? Yes. OK. Does it look like someone actually wrote on top? That I can't tell. That you can't tell if somebody wrote on top or if this is all part of another element, like as if it's been printed on. Do you see the striations? Yes, I saw. Do you know that that is from the corrugated cardboard? This is why the cardboard's got to go. All right. It's also acidic. So what you have here is a print with highlights. OK? It's not an original work of art, but it is a print. And then the printer highlighted the Conestoga wagon, highlighted, of course, the, um, the animals, highlighted the dog in the, in the front to give it depth so it's not just a flat print. It's a very nice print, however. An original Charles Marion Russell painting, if we had an original painting um, from about this time period, the early years of the 20th century, you know, it would probably be valued somewhere between, I don't know, 75,000 and 125,000, which can happen. I've seen people do that. I had one client who bought a uh, Schoonover painting you know, great Brandywine River painters along with the Wyeths, you know, Andrew Wyeth and N.C. Wyeth um, in Pennsylvania who bought a painting for $10 worth 15000 at a, at a thrift store. So they're out there. People give it away. Value on this piece, 
It's not an original at $75,000, but it certainly is worth $600. What'd you pay at the thrift store? $8. $8. So you did very well implementing what I taught you, as in addition to the way in which you've trained your own eye. Looking and looking and looking is very good. Another way to do that, try to educate your eye in places where you're not tempted to buy. Go to a museum and look at the pieces, because you can't buy it out of a museum. Go and look and train your eye in that way. Train your eye online even, because now these images are very, very good. Digital images are beautiful, and you can learn a lot and see a lot that way. And I'm glad that the YouTube channel is helping you too, and I'm glad that you took a drive from Dallas. Thanks. The canvas actually is a prepared, is a prepared printed textile. So it's, go, it's basically prepared with a particular chemical and then they put the image on top of it. But it is still a picture of a famous image. And then what they do is they highlight. Charles Marion Russell never touched this piece. His printer did the highlighting, okay? The person who's very famous for the highlighting is um, Thomas Kincaid. Highlighting, highlighting, and all the guys working for him highlighting. So this particular piece has a Mediterranean or Italian feel. It has been cut piece has been cut down and this particular piece by the stretcher indicates of course the way in which this particular piece called an H stretcher it looks like a big letter H so here and here and here you don't have a mitered corner what you have is a European stretcher typically southern Europe so that's Italy Spain okay this particular piece was purchased in Croatia how long ago you just bought it recently in Croatia about five years ago so you're there on vacation Okay, so you're there on vacation, you said, oh, I'm going to buy this. The frame is in be it's beautiful quality, it's 19th century. The frame is hand carved and hand gilded. So, hand carved, right, and hand gilded. The back of the frame is ebonized, it's a fancy term for painted to be black, right, ebonized, to look like ebony wood, right, dark. So ebonized, which was a popular um, style in the late 19th century. Your painting is from the 19th century, the late 1880s, 1890s, that neck of the woods. Your painting probably dates back any time between, I would say, 1825 and 1875. So your painting is rather old as well. Your frame is younger. So they put an old painting in a newer frame. The frame is not new, but it's newer than the painting. Now, the painting has been cut. It was a larger painting right? Probably of the Madonna and Child. And here's a couple things that are happening. This particular piece shows you, again, the Madonna or the Virgin Mary or Our Lady looking one particular way. She's usually looking at the Christ Child. So he's missing. That's what's happening. That's why we know she's been, he's been cut. There are certain elements that say it's quintessentially Italian. In Northern European painting, she has blonde hair. In Southern European painting, she has dark hair. Because we from the south, we, we who are of a lineage from the southern part of Europe, like me, I'm of Italian descent, we want the virgin to look like us. <laughs> so we give her dark hair. That's very typical. So you'll see that. You'll notice also that she has a little head tilt. That head tilt also comes from a tradition in art history which is an, a symbol of reverence or honor. She is almost always shown in blue. And you can see the corner of her mantle or her robes are blue. They're blue because the paint to actually make that blue color is from crushed down lapis lazuli, that stone. And lapis, in fact, will be crushed down mixed with egg yolks for tempera paint or mixed with oils to actually make the pigment. She has to be shown in blue to show honor to the virgin because she's a big deal, <laughs> you know? So that's what you're basically looking at. You'll notice also the images here, those rays that look like a halo, of course, represent that idea that she, of course, is saintly. Um, so the head tilt, all of this says, I'm an Italian painting from the 19th century or earlier, but I think she's probably in the early 1800s. Value on the painting, about $3,000. Value on the frame, another $500. $3,500 for this work of art. Now, this particular painting has been cleaned Okay, that's not a bad thing, it's been cleaned, the restoration has taken place. But for $800 to get a $3,500 piece like this, you did a great job. If you had a, a painting, and, I, you see the, painting and you I see a painting, 
and you see that it's a restored painting, and you recognize that it's been restored, would you believe that because it's been restored, someone thought it was valuable? Not always valuable. It could be sentimentally valuable and they want it restored. My mother started painting at 93. She painted for a couple of years till the end of her life. She was no Picasso, but I have a painting of my mother's and now that I don't have my mother, I love those paintings. You know, it's a little, you know, a church, a little house. It's not like it's great, but it's her. So to me, sentimentally. So if I ripped one of those paintings by accident, I'd have that restored. Right? Yeah. Sometimes. Are they worth much? No, they're only worth something to me. So there's that. Most of the time when a professional restorer is brought into the scene to restore something, that indicates that the painting has some value. So if you see restoration as professional restoration, if you turn it over and you see a Beva wax patch, or if you see um, different types of restoration, if you would recognize that, if you would recognize restoration that is professional, right, then I would say, eh, 95 times out of 100, that's a little bit of money, and depending on the time period. So if you have a painting from the 1950s, for example, um, and it's restored, eh, somebody put in a couple hundred dollars, even thousands of dollars to get it restored. If you see a restoration job like, you know, that, <laughs> right, you know that's not a professional restoration job, we slap some paint, some tape on it, right? You know that it's probably not worth that much. So yes, I would say depending on the time period, if it's an old painting, you know, like your painting, if it's an old painting like this painting and it has been restored, you know what I think happened with this painting, for example? I think this painting couldn't be restored in other areas, so they just cut out the part that's good. I think you can see the In here, I think it has just been cleaned with mineral spirits. I don't think it was in-painted, gessoed, and restored. I think it was mineral spirits to get rid of some of the gook. That's what I think of that. But I will say, if you see restoration, like from my days in museums, if I saw something restored, I'm thinking, OK, there's a reason why somebody bothered. And not only bothered for the time or the effort or the energy, but bothered with respect to how much money it costs to have a professional restore something. Good question. That's a very good question. If you do more restoration, you may do more damage. Once it's been restored, if it looks like that, I wouldn't touch that. That's just me. Um, that area that you see a difference. Can you all see the difference? I might be able to show it to you. It's right here in this area. One of the best ways to tell restoration is not to look at the painting right side up, it's to look at the painting upside down. Because you will find the restoration or something wrong if you look at it from a different angle. If I keep looking at it in this area, you can see that there is in painting, rest there is restoration here, not in painting. Okay? That's probably overzealous rubbing. Remember, it's a textile like your shirt with gesso, which is like rabbit skin glue or an adhesive with oil paint on top of it. You keep rubbing, something's going to come off. And that's basically what's happened over here. I would not continue to do restoration on this. That's my expert opinion. And I also would say that this particular piece, if you continue to um, apply mineral spirits or other things to clean it, you probably are going to take off a layer of the varnish. And it will not be as shiny, it will not look as good. If it gets matte, you know, matte like it's not shiny, it's not going to look as good, it's not going to be worth as much. Less is more when it comes to restoration. I know all of you want to clean everything. Oh, I've got to clean this painting, I've got to clean it, clean it. Stop cleaning everything. My mother hates it when I say it, be a little dirty. <laughs> Don't go scrubbing and polishing and all of that stuff. Leave it alone.